Look at these words. They all look really similar, don't they? And you would probably expect them to be pronounced in a similar way. But listen to this. Tough, bow, cough, dough. Hiccup, thorough, lock, through. English spelling is a mess and it makes learning and mastering pronunciation very, very tricky. So in this video, I'm going to read out a couple of really cool poems which help us to laugh at the absurdities of English spelling and to memorize some of these irregularities in spelling and pronunciation. Let's go. You're watching Real English with Real Teachers. Real Teachers. So while I am reading these poems, what I would really like you to do is to copy me, to imitate what I am saying, because imitation will really help you to improve your pronunciation and also your listening skills. Before I start to read the first poem, here's a quick word from Charlie. Before we go any further, I'd like to say that this video has been sponsored by italki, a website for language learners to find their perfect online tutor. With over 5,000 tutors listed on the website, there's no doubt you're going to find one. You're going to find one that you like, aren't you? And you can have it anytime, anywhere, as long as you've got an internet connection. And you can even find some incredibly affordable community tutors that will allow you to keep your speaking practice up to not lose what you've just learnt. And of course, Harry and I are on this platform. So if you wanted a one-to-one -one class with us over the other 1,719 other native English teachers listed, then be our guest. So check out our link in the description box below after this video that will enable you to get $10 worth of italki credits after your first lesson purchase. So we hope that benefits you, but let's get back to the video. So the first poem we've got today is called I Take It You Already Know. I take it you already know of tough and bow and cough and dough. Others may stumble, but not you on hiccup, thorough, lock and through. Well done, and now you wish, perhaps, to learn of less familiar traps. Beware of herd, a dreadful word, that looks like beard and sounds like bird, and dead, it's said like bed, not bead. For goodness sake, don't call it deed. Watch out for meat and great and threat. They rhyme with sweet and straight and debt. And moth is not a moth in mother, nor both in bother, broth in brother. And here is not a match for there, nor deer and fear, bear and pear. And then there's dose and rose and loose. Just look them up and goose and choose, and cork and work and card and ward, and font and front and word and sword, and do and go and thwart and cart. Come, come. I've hardly made a start. A dreadful language? Man alive. I'd mastered it when I was five. So unfair, isn't it? So that was a really good one. Uh, the next one we have our strange lingo. Our strange lingo. When the English tongue we speak, why is break not rhymed with freak? Will you tell me why it's true? We say so, but likewise few. And the maker of the verse cannot rhyme his horse with worse. Beard is not the same as herd. Cord is different from word. Cow is cow, but low is low. Shoe is never rhymed with foe. Think of hose, dose and lose. And think of goose and yet with choose. Think of comb, tomb and bomb. Dole and roll or home and sum. Since pay is rhymed with say, why not paid with said, I pray? Think of blood, food and good. Mould is not pronounced like could. Wherefore done, but gone and lone. Is there any reason known? To sum all up, it seems to me, sound and letters don't agree. At least not in English. I like that one. That was really cool. Okay, and the last one we have is called phony phonetics. Phony phonetics. So repeat after me, guys. One reason why I cannot spell, although I learned the rules quite well, 
is that some words like coo and through sound just like through and flu and who. When oo is never spelled the same, the juice becomes a guessing game. And then I ponder over though. Is it spelt so or throw or bow? And bow is never bow, it's bow. I mean the bow that sounds like plow. And not the bow that sounds like row, the row that is pronounced like row. I wonder too why rough and tough, that sound the same as gruff and muff, are spelled like bow and though, for they are both pronounced a different way. And why can't I spell trough and cough, the same as I do scoff and golf? Why isn't drought spelt like rout, or doubt or pout or sauerkraut? When words all sound so much the same, to change the spelling seems a shame or insane. There is no sense, see sound like sense, in making such a difference. Between the sight and sound of words, each spelling rule that undergirds, the way a word should look will fail, and often prove to no avail, because exceptions will negate the truth of what the rule may state. So though I try, I still despair, and moan and mutter, it's not fair, that I'm held up to ridicule and made to look like such a fool, when it's the spelling that's at fault, let's call this nonsense to a halt. <laughs> I like that one. So I hope these poems have helped you to see the fun side of it. And I hope they serve you in understanding this tricky little language, which is English. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, give me a thumbs up if you would like to see more videos like this. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram to get more day-to-day -day posts and stories helping you learn English in more dynamic and interactive ways.